this is what happens when you let a multi-billionaire implant chips in your brain. Don't worry, it's just a movie. Wait a minute. The film begins in the Middle East, where a helicopter assaults this stone stronghold with some cool text transitions. Inside, four spies interrogate this guy. But he low-key had a grenade on him and goes kamikaze, so one of the spies has to sacrifice himself. Meet the survivors. We got Harry, aka Galahad, Merlin, and Lancelot. They belong to a secret intelligence agency known as Kingsman. This was a test to determine their new member. Welcome to Kingsman, Lancelot. Quite the warm welcome, I must say. In London, Harry visits Michelle, his savior's widow. He offers his good vibes and prayers and a medal of valor engraved with a number, which she can use any time to call in a favor. Just remember, Oxfords, not brogues. That's the secret code word. Despite the kind gesture, the grieving widow rejects. I don't want your help. I want my husband back. Harry turns to her child instead, who introduces himself as Eggsy. Unfortunate. Anyway, he gives the medal to Eggsy and reminds him to take care of his mother. Then, we smoothly transition from metal to snow globe and fast forward to 17 years later. This time, we're in Argentina. Luke Skywalker, I mean, some dude named Professor Arnold, is tied up. These guys' his boss apparently wants a chat with him. To keep him comfy, the henchmen offer him a drink. A 62 Dalmore. Goddamn, these boys be drinking good. Oh look, Lancelot. He stylishly eliminates the henchman and proudly declares he's here to rescue the professor. Though, not before a celebratory drink. Thank you, sir. Though, as he takes a deliciously expensive sip, another visitor arrives. Looks like it's time to split. You see what I did there? Yeah, he got split in two. By prosthetic legs, no less. This is Gazelle, but don't be fooled by the name. She's no prey. She takes some sheets to cover the bodies before opening the door for her boss, Samuel L. Jackson, aka Valentine. He's a bit squeamish. I see one drop of blood, that is me done. A little bit of foreshadowing. Valentine apologizes for the mess, but assures Professor Arnold that he'll find out who Lancelot works for, and then they can be the best of friends. After, we cut to Harry arriving at a tailor shop called Kingsman, one of their bases of operations. He proceeds to the dining room, and at the head of the table is Alfred. No, seriously, he's also named Alfred in this movie. Anyway, all the agents are present for their Zoom meeting. They toast to Lancelot's memory and immediately prepare for the selection process for a replacement. Each one of them will be sending in a candidate. Merlin then arrives with information on Lancelot's last mission. Arthur explains that he was investigating mercenaries that were experimenting with biological weaponry. First Zoom? Now this? It's all sounding very familiar. Merlin details previous incidents starting in Uganda where bath salts were found in a gorilla-based water supply which led to rage, cannibalism, and multiple fatalities. We also learn that Professor Arnold is a climate change doomsayer and a pusher of Gaia theory. With the world healing itself or some such. More importantly, he's alive and working like nothing's happened. Arthur gives the mission to Galahad and reminds him of his membership proposal and to pick a more suitable candidate this time. Harry is irritated. It seems Arthur wasn't keen on his previous candidate. You know, the man who saved his life. He defends the late man's honor, stating that he had as much Kingsman material as any of them, more so. Arthur rejects the sentiment. Well, Arthur, you're a snob. Harry leaves, remarking that the world is changing. We cut to Eggsy, all grown up and wearing his dad's Medal of Honor. Unfortunately, his mother, Michelle, is with this douchebag, Dean. Talk about going from hero to zero. Dean asks Eggsy to buy something at the store while him and his friend keep his mom company. <laughs> Later at the pub, Eggsy hangs out with his friends. They wonder why his mom doesn't do better than Dean, noting that she do be kinda thick though. No offense, bruv. Hmm, okay, I think Eggsy agrees. Then, he vows to smash Dean's face in. But, his friend points to Dean's buddies, who happen to be there, remarking that they'll clap his cheeks. The goons hear this and get pissed. Oi mate, you think you can talk shit? Okay, I can't do this voice. Anyway, Eggsy apologizes and the gang walk off. However, Eggsy got some quick hands. Why are we walking? They have fun in their new whip while the owner can do nothing but look on. Cry about it. Which he does, to Dean, over the phone, while suddenly a reverse police chase ensues. Turns out Eggsy is an absolute Chad driver and a good human being. He'd rather crash the car than hit a kitty. Eggsy urges his friends to run for it before crashing into the police car. The next day, he's interrogated. But he's no snitch. Respect. He asks for a phone call and the inspector remarks, Better call your mom and tell her you'll be late for dinner. 18 months late. Okay, that was pretty good. Though, instead of his mother, Eggsy calls the number on the metal. The call connects, but as he explains the situation, he gets cut off. But then, he remembers a secret line. Oxford's not broke. Your complaint has been noted. And just like that, Eggsy is free and exits the station. Harry greets him and offers him a ride home. Bro, who are you? I'm the guy that gave you your medal. Oh, and your dad saved my life. 
Later, the two share a drink at the pub. Eggsy probes into Harry's past and his connection to his father. Sorry, mate, that's classified. However, he shares minor details about how his father saved him and those around him. So, I owe him. Your father was a brave, good man. Harry proceeds to chastise Eggsy, suggesting his father would be disappointed in him. He's read his files, and Eggsy has quite the list of accolades. High IQ, great school performance, but it all went down the drain. Petty crime, never had a job, playing too much video games, relatable. To be fair, Harry, there is a labor shortage. He counters that Eggsy even gave up on his hobbies. He was a prolific gymnast with Olympic team potential. Eggsy blames growing up around Dean, which made him pick up different hobbies. But Harry dismisses this as just another excuse, adding that Eggsy quit the Marines halfway through training. Yeah, because my mom didn't want to lose me too. Judging people like me from your ivory towers with no thought about why we do what we do. Eggsy emphasizes that they'd live just as well as the snobs if given the same silver spoon up their bums. Then, the intense debate gets interrupted by Dean's goons who waltz in like they own the place. Harry tries to politely shoo them off but only incurs further threats. Eggsy insists he leaves, and he does, until the goons lob a nasty insult in his way. Hey, you're stupid, or whatever. Harry decides to give the lads a lesson. Manners maketh man. Time for some cool action sequences. <laughs> Harry beats the living daylights out of these fools, through a combination of ninja skills and a few high-tech spy tools. All the while, Eggsy watches on with amazement. Harry blocks bolts using his umbrella and finally takes out the shooter. Pew. It's okay, go to sleep. Harry finishes his drink and reveals he had to blow off some steam. A friend of mine died. He knew your father too, actually. Anyway, you must go to sleep now too. Whoa, Harry, relax. Eggsy swears he's not a snitch, never been a snitch, and never will be. Harry confesses he agrees with Eggsy about the snobs, but adds that there are exceptions. He leaves him, wishing him the best of luck. Later, we catch some news at home where we learn that Valentine is an eccentric billionaire. Basically, a black Elon Musk. Eggsy arrives home and Dean greets him with a knuckle sandwich. Who was that old geezer you were with at the bar? Eggsy keeps quiet, further reinforcing that he ain't no snitch. This prompts Dean to lose his shit, threatening to chop up Eggsy. Thankfully, Harry put a bug on him and has been listening the whole time. Suddenly, his voice can be heard within the house. Ha, huh, spy speakers. He threatens to expose Dean and have him jailed, successfully defusing the situation. Harry instructs Eggsy to visit him at the tailor shop. He leaves, only to be blocked by Dean's goons. But that's okay. Don't forget he was a gymnast, which means he's great at parkour. Very cool. Eggsy enters Kingsman where Harry is waiting. He proceeds to give him a tour of the dressing room while offering some perspective. I see a young man with potential, who is loyal, can do as he's asked, and wants to do something good with his life. Harry invites him to become a Kingsman, aka a super secret spy guy. Okay. Harry activates the elevator leading underground. While descending, he recites the history of Kingsman. Basically, a bunch of rich dudes wanted to play James Bond to keep the peace, or whatever. The suit is the modern gentleman's armor, and the Kingsman agents are the new knights. Upon reaching the bottom, we find an underground railway system. They get in and are transported to the UK headquarters. Eggsy's in awe, but there's no time to appreciate the view. They're late for the Lancelot candidate briefing. Merlin greets them just outside the barracks and Eggsy promptly enters. All in. This may be the most dangerous job application in the world. Only one of you will become the next Lancelot. Write your names and the details of your next of kin on the body bag. You write us out, and you and your next of kin will be in that bag. Subtle. Eggsy seems to be the only one reluctant as this girl, Roxy, introduces herself. Eggy. No, it's Eggsy. Then, these snobs start introducing themselves as well, but Charlie is the only one that ends up mattering. They question Eggsy's educational background until one of them suggests he served them at McDonald's. Roxy insists he disregards the three, and then another girl, Amelia, offers her pen to him. Popular with the ladies already. <laughs> Let's go. Roxy assures him that the body bag is merely a scare tactic. We cut to Valentine, complaining that not even the CIA can identify Lancelot. We start learning more about him. He's from MIT, doesn't care about money. Of course, only the wealthy don't care about money. And he has a messiah complex. Nobody told me to try and save the world. I wanted to. And he believes that finally, he has the solution. And I found it. As the camera pans out, we find out that he's in the White House talking to Barry O. Ha, <laughs> those were simpler times. Back at the barracks, the candidates are asleep when the room suddenly begins flooding at a rapid pace. Roxy shouts to head to the showers, leaving Eggsy perplexed. But we're already wet. Instead, he swims through the door. Meanwhile, the others make a makeshift snorkel with the shower tube and toilet. Ah, clever. Eggsy eventually gives up on the door and heads for the mirror, punching it until... Nice. Merlin congratulates them, but in the end, reprimands them too. You forgot the most important thing. Teamwork. Oh, that girl overslept. 
Back to Harry, he visits Professor Arnold, feigning interest in his work, before grabbing him. You were kidnapped. What happened? The professor is in immense pain as he starts confessing. <laughs> then, Harry barely escapes. Apparently, Valentine iced the professor. He used an implant to detonate his head. At least the surveillance system works. More importantly, My colleague died! Valentine gets paranoid as they don't know what organization is after them. Valentine is forced to speed up his plans with no concern for the fortune it'll take. I look like I give a Back at Kingsman HQ, the candidates select a Pumphy to remind them how important teamwork is. Eggsy chooses a pug, mistaking it for a bulldog. Wait, they get bigger, right? Nope. Shit. Checking back in with Harry, we see he made it back. Sort of. Unfortunately, this Merlin is no magician and can't heal him to full health. To make matters worse, they don't know what happened as Harry's recording of the incident is encrypted and uncrackable. Just like today's sponsor, Nord V- I'm just kidding. You're safe for now. A worried Eggsy enters the room, but Merlin insists he remains patient and focused on his training. As you can see by his uncooperative dog, it isn't going great. And his teammates are still toxic. Because we gotta hate these noms even more. Later, Eggsy gets paired up with Charlie, who still wonders how Eggsy managed to stay for so long. They exchange banter while monitoring their target. Charlie believes they're only keeping him around as positive discrimination, suggesting Eggsy's only here as a sort of charity case. <laughs> yeah, how's that for positive discrimination? And this says a lot about society. We cut to Valentine in a meeting with the Swedish princess and prime minister. Whatever his plans are, the prime minister is on board, but the princess is like, You are completely crazy. She scolds the prime minister and tries to leave, but gets restrained. Unfortunately for her, Valentine is securing influential people to his cause. The princess is dragged away, all the while screaming for help. Her guards charge Gazelle, but don't realize that she's quite literally built different. She easily dodges bullets and splits the security apart. With that wrapped up, the Prime Minister gets his implant. Welcome aboard. Back in Kingsman HQ, Eggsy barges in on Harry. Don't you know how to knock? Despite Eggsy's lack of manners, Harry congratulates him on making it to the final six candidates. Then, a polite man and a fellow enjoyer of knocking enters. Merlin initially dismisses Eggsy, but Harry insists he stay. They review Harry's recording and... Eggsy is left disturbed. A bit much, innit? Merlin chimes in that it was the implant in his neck, and being the tech wizard that he is, he managed to trace the signal back to Richmond Valentine. Eggsy chimes in about how the man is a genius. Did you see his announcement? He snags a tablet and pulls it up. Valentine is giving out a free SIM card. Free calls, free internet for everyone. Oh, yep. Wait, isn't Elon doing this with satellites? Then, Harry zooms in and recognizes a familiar looking scar. He decides to have a tat -a, -tat. a what? Tat -a, -tat. a private conversation between two people. Okay. Merlin plans to get Harry into a dinner hosted by Valentine. He warns him that hundreds of VIPs have gone missing, but Harry invites the challenge, stating that his alias better be someone worth kidnapping. Now, we come back to some more training for the candidates. This time, they're skydiving. Eggsy comforts a terrified Roxy. Merlin gives the task of landing on a target without radar detection. Roxy is still shook, so Charlie takes the lead. Before Eggsy jumps, he offers one final bit of encouragement. Follow me, yeah? And with that, she finally eats herself out. Alright, where are we dropping, boys? Honestly, this looks like a lot of fun. But before everyone gets too comfortable, Merlin reminds them that this is Kingsman. They go to the extreme. Oh, by the way, guys, one of you doesn't have a parachute. Rut row. The panic group starts pairing up, but one of them chickens out. They regroup, planning to share their shoot with the one who doesn't have one. One by one, those with shoots exit the formation. It comes down to just Eggsy and Roxy as Merlin watches on with bated breath. Eggsy pulls on Roxy's parachute and anxiously grabs hold as he is the odd man out. Fortunately, they both survive and even land on the mark. GG, boys. Shortly after, Merlin congratulates Eggsy and Roxy for setting a new record. Not their intention, but okay. Now, only Eggsy, Roxy, and Charlie remain. They're dismissed, but Eggsy confronts Merlin for not giving him the parachute. Am I the expendable candidate? Don't speak to me like that, boy. Come closer. You need to take that chip off your shoulder. Got him. At night, Harry arrives at Valentine's. Mr. DeVille. But instead of a party, he gets a private dinner because he donated so much money. Hmm, that'd be a good idea for certain Twitch streamers. They enter the dining hall and Gazelle wheels in an exquisite and happy meal. <laughs> Harry humors him and suggests a Twinkie for dessert, cause, you know, the ice cream machine is always broken. Anyway, they go back and forth on Valentine's climate change efforts, until Harry quotes Professor Arnold. You know, not a lot of people knew about him. Perhaps acting on suspicions, Valentine asks if Harry likes spy movies. He confesses he prefers the older films. The two bond over Bond movies. Sorry, that was my dream job, gentleman spy. Meanwhile, Harry praises the villain and reveals, 
I rather fancied a future as a colorful megalomaniac. What a shame we both had to grow up. Of course, they're low-key referring to each other. They finish dinner, and Harry thanks him for such a happy meal. Beautiful. As he departs, we see that Valentine put a nano tracker in Harry's drink. Stalking him will be easy. Later, Harry reports his progress to Arthur over breakfast. He couldn't get much information aside from a look at this document. South Glade Mission Church. A hate group with no clear connection to Valentine. Weird. Then, we cut to Princess Tilda hysterically demanding to be let out, before hearing the numerous voices of other prisoners. On the news, we see that Valentine's free SIM cards are successfully making it out to the public, including Eggsy's mom. Over a billion cards distributed. Then, Merlin interrupts the remaining candidates with a mission. Attend a party and win over the person and their respective photos. Eggsy is excited. Posh girls love a bit of rough. Yeah, we'll see about that. You certainly will. Oh, they all have the same target. At the party, they all try their luck. Charlie takes a lead, but Roxy exposes his lackluster, negging strategy. Meanwhile, Eggsy pulls up with the drip, but the other two dismiss it as another tactic. Suddenly, a waiter interjects and catches their target's attention. There's a phone call for you at reception. Then, he gives the gang a dating tip. Rahipno, or even something stronger. Go to sleep now. Shortly after, Eggsy wakes up tied to train tracks. The man offers to cut him loose in exchange for information on Harry and the Kingsman. Eggsy doesn't answer, only begging to be let go. As the train gets closer, the man asks, Is the Kingsman worth dying for? Eggsy is no snitch and goes, Heck yeah. Oh, hey Harry, looks like this was another test. Color me shocked. Roxy already passed and now we're watching Charlie. And he snitched. The train passes and Arthur is furious and disappointed. Of course the snob's backer is another snob. Arthur leaves and we're back with the others. Merlin congratulates their mentors. Now, we check back in with Valentine. He's uploading his handprint for his security system, no doubt part of his huge plan. This should only be operated by a stable genius like me. And it seems like this suitcase will be part of an experiment at the church. Meanwhile, Harry and Eggsy proceed to Kingsman to have a suit tailored for him. Unfortunately, fitting room 1 is occupied, so they pass the time at fitting room 3. It's a secret gun and gadget room. Check out these kicks. Sheesh! He further demonstrates the tools available in their arsenal. A pen with a button activated poison, a hand grenade disguised as a lighter, and a taser ring. Then, Eggsy distracts Harry and snags a gadget. Put it back. Oh, you thought you was slick. They head back to the front desk and Valentine emerges from the fitting room. He explains his sudden visit as just wanting to cop the same drip as Harry. The tension in the room is thick, but they both keep up their act. Harry recommends he purchase a top hat at Lock & Co Hatters. Lock as in... Locked up. Nice. He actually takes advice and completes the fit, but turns out the hat has a microphone in it. Back at HQ, Eggsy meets with Arthur. The old geezer states that despite how much he might hate it, Eggsy might just end up as a good spy. Then, he randomly points his gun in his face menacingly, before kindly handing it to him and asking him to shoot the dog. In the other room, Roxy is given the same task. You monsters. Eggsy is either conflicted or constipated. Nonetheless, he ultimately can't do it and turns the gun towards Arthur. At least she has balls. Go home. Eggsy leaves the HQ via stolen car as Roxy officially becomes Lancelot. Back at home, he's welcomed by his mother before noticing she has a black eye. This stops right now. He hunts down Dean and invites him to a round of fisticuffs. I imagine that's how they call fighting in England. Unfortunately for him, the car he stole can be remotely controlled. He fails to avenge his mother and is led back to Harry's place. As you can imagine, he's upset and disappointed. You chose a dog over being a spy? Did you? Yes. Harry shows him Mr. Pickles stuffed in the bathroom. Actually, turns out the gun was loaded with blanks. Oh, and remember that girl that drowned, I mean, overslept? Yeah, she's fine too. Kingsman only condones the risking of a life to save another. You'd think he have caught on by now. Then, Merlin interrupts the two and alerts Harry of Valentine's current activities. He can be heard proudly announcing that they're ready to test their plans in the church that Harry identified earlier. Eggsy apologizes for loving dogs as Harry leaves for his mission. We're now in Kentucky, where Harry attends a church sermon filled with very hateful speech. He's being monitored by Merlin and Valentine. Uh-oh, this could be a trap and not the fun kind. He decides to leave, but this Karen insists he stays until the end. So he counters with, Hail Satan and have a lovely afternoon. Valentine starts his task as Harry is leaving. He sends out a signal that is amplified by his free SIM cards. Then we witness one of the best action scenes in history, perhaps ever. Whatever this signal is, it's causing everyone to turn on one another. Harry once more demonstrates the superior training Kingsman agents go through as carnage unfolds before our very eyes. Merlin calls out to Harry to no avail while Eggsy watches on in horror. After all this spectacular butt kicking, Harry is left as the sole survivor. He slowly regains consciousness, witnessing the mayhem and realizing what happened. As he leaves, he finds Valentine waiting for him outside with armed guards. 
What did you do to me? I had no control. Valentine revels in the success of his test and explains he simply sent out a signal that heightened aggression through his SIM cards. Science. Valentine approaches and starts his villain monologue. Time for him to reveal his convoluted plan to kill Harry so that Harry can later escape with an equally convoluted plan. Well, actually, this ain't that kind of move. Eggsy, Merlin, and even Arthur witness this and are left shook. With the test being a resounding success, Valentine now prepares to go worldwide. Meanwhile, Eggsy calms himself with a little drink before heading back to Kingsman. He arrives just in time to see Arthur. He's deeply worried, but Arthur downplays the situation, revealing that recordings of Valentine's confession have already been forwarded to authori authorities. Our work here is done. Understandably, Eggsy is not satisfied, so Arthur offers him a drink, a toast in Harry's memory. Then, Eggsy notices the scar in Arthur's neck, so he distracts him. To Galahad. Eggsy then starts questioning him. Arthur is impressed, enough to consider him as a replacement candidate for Galahad. But of course, they must agree on certain terms. Arthur threatens Eggsy with the poison pen before explaining how Valentine convinced him. Basically, global warming is the equivalent of a fever and humans are the virus. Either we go or the Earth does. The result is the same. The virus dies. Eggsy contemplates Valentine's population control plans, while Arthur commends Valentine as humanity's savior. Arthur dismisses Eggsy's concerns and once more invites him to be part of the new world. I'd rather be with Harry. I'm chillin', bruv. <laughs> Eggsy successfully outsmarted Arthur and switched their glasses. You die, little freak. Then, he conducts a little surgery to pull out the implant. With this evidence, he's able to get Merlin and Roxy on his side. They'll have to stop Valentine by themselves. On the plane, Merlin introduces the so-called Star Wars suit, which they'll use to destroy one of Valentine's satellites and disrupt his signal. This should give Eggsy enough time to get into Valentine's base and get Merlin into the mainframe to shut it down. While Eggsy and Merlin deliberate on the implant's functions, Roxy suits up with her gigantic balls, I mean balloons. These balloons will help her reach the edge of the atmosphere, high enough to fire a missile into Valentine's satellite. Before she takes off, Eggsy comforts her as she's still terrified of heights. Then, Merlin arranges for their arrival at Valentine's base. Using Arthur's invitation and his phone, Eggsy uses Chester King as his alias. Back at the base, the VIPs are down and quiet, probably feeling guilty over what's about to happen. But Valentine lightens the mood. You are the chosen people. Is Noah the bad guy? Is God the bad guy? The animals? Eat, drink, and water! We cut back to Eggsy getting his drip in order as they approach the base. Sheesh. Looking good, Eggsy. Feeling good. They safely land and successfully infiltrate the base. While Roxy continues her ascent, Eggsy finds a laptop and thankfully the Prime Minister is more than willing to share. Pew! Oh. With this, Merlin is able to get into the private network. But it's not going to be that easy. One of Roxy's balloons pop and Eggsy is apprehended by none other than Charlie, the snob. His rich family got invited. Typical. I caught a surprise! Valentine witnesses Eggsy tase and knock out Charlie like the chad that he is. So he rushes to execute his plan. Two minutes counting down. Meanwhile, Roxy manages to fire the missiles into the satellite. Unfortunately, her last balloon pops and she rapidly falls back to Earth. I hate that place. Eggsy makes his getaway, but is outnumbered. Thanks to Merlin's instructions, he takes the easier route back to their plan. Countdown completed! Oopsie. Wait, they named this guy Valentine just to call this Valentine's Day. Dumb. Anyway, Roxy still has no control over her descent while Eggsy proves to be a worthy Kingsman agent. He's got aimbot, map hacks, and a dope suit. Once the countdown hits zero, Valentine quickly realizes that something has gone to shit. Meanwhile, Roxy finally opens her parachute for an easy descent and Eggsy clears his path. On the plane, Merlin spots the biometric security measures and knows that he can't hack through that. He steps outside and spots some guards. <laughs> Merlin with the assist. GG. Eggsy safely gets back on the plane, but they can't leave. Eggsy has to go back and keep Valentine's hand off the biometric security thingy. It's only a matter of time before he gets that signal back up. Time to get geared up. Eggsy opts for the umbrella. Sure. Meanwhile, Valentine panics to get his signal back, so he asks for a piggyback. E is V. Elon Musk? He gets E's help, and his satellite chain is slowly getting reconnected. Eggsy rushes to finish off his mission, finding initial success with his dope-ass umbrella, but eventually getting surrounded. Plus, Merlin has his own problems to face. Cornered and out of options, Eggsy remembers the implants and Merlin gets to work. He gets access to the implants and... Hmm... Yes, please. Thanks to the film's family-friendly filter, we witness an astonishing fireworks display to commemorate V-Day. Eggsy starts celebrating but gets interrupted by Princess Tilda. If I get you out, will you give me a kiss? I give you more than just a kiss. Say less, fam. His celebration gets cut short as Valentine is still alive and announces, You didn't stop shit. It's still happening. He activates his device and transmits the signal causing mayhem and violence worldwide. Gazelle happily inspects the signal's effects around the world, but Eggsy interrupts them. 
She jumps off to take care of him as Valentine continues, uh, saving the planet or whatever. Gazelle easily goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eggsy. Well, actually, she doesn't have toes. Both are in a hurry, but they decide a slow-mo finish is necessary, with Eggsy activating the hidden blade in his shoe. As Gazelle realizes what happened, Eggsy flashes a smirk. Rip in peace. Quick on his feet, Eggsy takes one of Gazelle's feet and... God damn. Valentine pukes at the sight of his own blood before tumbling down. The signal is disrupted, and with the violence put on hold, the Kingsmen congratulate one another. Then, Eggsy approaches Valentine who's expecting a corny one-liner. This ain't that kind of movie, bruv. That'll do. It's time to celebrate. Eggsy hurries back with a bottle of champagne. So, you gonna come in? Yep. And one more assist from Merlin as he provides a door code. Merlin, with the governor. Then, Eggsy opens the back door.